The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour as we get uh, started off here today. Uh, a nice day. Uh, I don't suspect we're going to get uh, blowout volume, although it's fairly good. Uh, we're up about 500 million shares on the CBOE compared to yesterday. So, yeah, is it going to be a sign of strength? Probably not. Uh, we've been hovering around about 10 billion, 11 billion shares on the day. We may push into 11 and a half billion by the end of the day. Uh, we've got 7.3 billion eh, pretty much right at the moment. So that was actually, or that is actually, Slightly bearish. Generally, even ties go to the runner on volume. So if it's just the same, uh, you can still look at it. Now, I have thought uh, that uh, what we're really looking at is uh, some options expiration where they got everybody as bearish as they could. And then they're going to move it up and let all those uh, put options go to money heaven. So uh, do I think we're going up forever? No. I've been looking uh, in past patterns where uh, too many people think that we're just going down and we're going down and we're going down. And a long-term bear market just doesn't go down. It just goes down a whole lot more than it goes up. So could we have a stumble back up to 4,100 in the S&P? That's been kind of the high range that I've been looking at. I think we could. Uh, things There could be a few things, Putin croaks. I mean, you could probably come up with a few other things where people think, well, maybe things are a little bit better. And does that stick? Probably not. But what it does is tend to make you think that maybe everybody will focus on something else instead of what they're focused on now. If you look at the political polling, the sentiment is fairly bad, and that's generally a fairly good time. Uh, they rate uh, crime, and I think it was, uh, it was pretty much a, a dead uh, heat on crime and inflation. Uh, for our purposes, uh, probably focused more on the inflation side of the uh, equation for the polling. Uh, but uh, you know, the old saying is you buy on the cannons and you sell on the trumpets. Uh, but, uh, you know, the markets, even in a bear market, if you go back and count the days, it was probably higher than the day before about three-fourths of the time. Even in a bear market, even in a bull market, the big difference between the two is not how many days in a row you go down generally, although in the worst part of it, it does go down fairly uh, fast. It's this that you get this relentless, slightly higher, slightly higher, slightly higher, and then the rug pull. And I think a lot of people are too focused on just thinking we go right there to the bottom and that's going to be it. Uh, even in some of the worst bear markets, we've had fairly decent bounces. Uh, the one that... Uh, really made me as a trader actually there were two but the one that i liked the best was in i think it was around 2008 where there were double tops in the uh, financials and the second uh, top came in on about 30 40 percent on most of the big financial stocks uh, volume of the previous high and that continues today throughout uh Probably the last 10 years, we've been massively uh, manipulated by the Fed and the Treasury and by anybody that can manipulate uh, to drive the markets higher uh, to theoretically get us past uh, the uh, housing blow up of 2008, 9 and 7. Uh, but uh, even then, it, it didn't just go down. You get short areas where it does and it does go down. 3x what it goes up 
and those days are still about 25% of the days that it goes higher. So could we just stumble up for a couple of months, uh, put a pause in the bear market? A lot of people say it would be over, and then it comes back uh, not like a lamb, but a lion. I think that's a saying, isn't it, from the Bible? My misspent youth. 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, you can always put a message in the den. So that's kind of it for the moment. Don't get all wound up in thinking that uh, the markets are one way. They're neither one way on the way up nor on the way down. It's just the amplitude of the moves tends to be very different. So... Again, after the bell tonight, uh, we're going to continue to look at. Uh, oh, let me get it here. Tuesday, uh, going to look at Netflix tonight. Uh, da, 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 intuitive surgical. Uh, da, 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 we'll go through the rest, um, and we'll go through the earnings here in the show for the ones earlier. Uh, then we get into tomorrow, uh, and that is after the market. We've got Tesla. IBM, Procter & Gamble, Lamb Research, uh, and Abbott Labs. I think it's before the bell. Um, Kendra Morgan and Alcoa. Somebody in the den just posted that uh, big multi-country uh, industrial kind of companies will be it. Uh, Las Vegas Sands. Um, may give us a little idea. It would be very interesting to see what they say about uh, China and maybe what they know uh, or what they think they know about how China is going to progress. Uh, let's say in a scenario that China drops the zero tolerance on COVID. What would that do to their business? What would that do to their economy and their stock market? And would we follow suit even if it was wrong for two months eventually uh, that could get us into Christmas. So let's not get too upset one way or the other, bull or bear. I did post one of the most famous quotes from Jesse Livermore early today, and that was, uh, there's no bear side to the market nor bull side to the market. There's only the right side. And just remember that if you are going to be short, that a lot of money is going to come very quickly. The belief is that if you just stay short, you'll be fine. The reality is you're going to make your money fairly quick. You want to take it and wait for the bounce to go again. So that's kind of it uh, for this segment. We'll be back, as I said, with a little bit of history. Uh, we'll talk about the earnings we did have this morning already. Uh, we'll look forward and take another look and see if there's anything else out here. But uh, don't think the, a lot. Uh, for that, but uh, that's kind of it. Uh, as we uh, go to break here, let's take a quick look. Uh, up 48 points. Oh, I uh, got a quick question we'll answer, and that is on options. Uh, we'll talk about that uh, when we return after this incredibly short timeout. inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Free at one eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Internationally at seven two seven eight seven three seven six one eight. On this day in 1958, uh, Higginbotham and Robert Dvorak Sr., not to be confused with Robert Dvorak Jr., of keyboard fame and eh, kind of general blowhard in the technology sector, shows off a tennis simulator game they called Tennis for Two, developed with a on a Donner Model 30 analog computer using an oscilloscope. Of course, uh, uh, why not a direct copy of it? Uh, of course, uh, we've seen that really become the first massively adopted uh, video game called Pong. Uh, they had to use a, uh, a, a kind of a, well, 1958 circa oscilloscope to play it, but it wasn't all that much different. Uh, but, uh, yeah, video games, really the first one ever shown on this day in 1958. Now, of course, they're everywhere, and I love playing them. Ah, my favorite new one is uh, Destroyer, where you get to uh, uh, go out and uh, depth charge Nazis in their U-boats. Uh, what a great simulation kind of game. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, I didn't want to get rid of that. One of my questions, uh, or my first big question of the day I said I would answer on the air, and that is, Robin Hood, uh, is this ever coming back? Now, last week, they had a ruling in their lawsuit. And I would say, if any of the stuff in the lawsuit is even semi-true, they have a huge problem. Now, the judge ruled that there was more than ample evidence to go forward with the case, and then when you look at the actual claims and the uh, proofs, uh, along with the depositions that they have already put out, uh, Robin Hood apparently um, was stealing from the poor and giving to the rich. At least that is the claim by the litigants. Uh, it does look like a lot of people are saying that uh, they were involved. They have subpoenaed many other folks. 
but it looks like the scam was getting enough orders together, selling the order flow in front of it, and sometimes the order flow, uh, especially in fast markets on a lot of those meme stocks, uh, could be 5 or 10%. So there was some absolutely huge money changing hands with zero risk uh, in uh, the uh, high frequency traders. Now, none of these guys were the giant big names that we're generally used to, which uh, might be even worse because uh, these guys won't have a lot of uh, protection in Congress like Robin Hood did because so many of the Congress were involved uh, in owning the stock themselves. And uh, they were able to, I think they leaned on the SEC quite a bit. The question is, if any of this stuff ends up being true, I don't know how the F SEC eventually ignores it all uh, as the way that they've done it up to this point. But there were some trades. Again, there were 10, uh, I mean, there were 50 or 100 shares of uh, a $10 stock. Uh, but by delaying it and moving it in fast markets, they were able to buy it and sell it and instantly make 5 and 10%. Um, profits, that's on the side of the high frequency traders. But to do that, they had to be sold uh, the orders before they came in. So not this wasn't like a couple of pennies or something. This was uh, this is uh, pretty much uh, you can steal more with a briefcase than you can with a handgun kind of stuff. So we shall see. But uh, the judge is ruled. Uh, the evidence up to this point hadn't been challenged, but has been presented. It looks fairly uh, definitive. I mean, a lot of times there's a lot of huge shot John and maybe this person said this. No, they've already been able to get uh, uh, some uh, uh, of the documents and apparently some of these documents probably came from insiders that are none too happy uh, that uh, they work for an organization with uh, at least uh, alleged low moral standards. So does it ever come back? Man, if any of this stuff becomes true, the question is, can it survive at all? Not can it come back? Because there would be some pretty massive fines and it looks all along like this was nothing more, uh, at least from the allegations, a giant scam uh, to sell order flow at rates that you would never get away with if you were buying regular lots through a regular broker. 877-927-6648. Uh, as we said, we were going to get into some of these other charts uh, today uh, for earnings. Again, maybe everybody just a little bit uh, ahead of the bear market for earnings. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. There. Okay. Come on. Um, and, of course, oh, yeah, I wanted to get into that first. Thanks for reminding me. Uh, okay, I'll answer that in email. Okay. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, anyway, we had a nice drive uh, higher. You've got plenty of volume. You're not holding all of it, but I'm not surprised. When we look at the spies, let's go look at that real quick because I wanted to talk about options. Uh, options had 370 as the first uh, uh, minor resistance levels. Uh, we blew through that, got to 375. 375 was the second level. If we can get up and break 375, the next level up on options is 380. My belief right now is that we expire somewhere between 375 and 380, as that's been the projection for a while. And my guess is that, uh, especially this morning, we probably had a lot more people diving on the short uh, bandwagon, and they're probably going to slowly cover into options expiration on Friday. So, okay. Let's see. Yeah. 
Okay, got that. Got that. Get through all of these. Okay. Uh, We looked at uh, Goldman Sachs. Anyway, uh, options, 370. We're past that. I don't see us closing below 370. The question is, can we get above 375 and how far? Uh, the options are predicting at the highs that we close at 380 on Friday. We'll be back after this. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back. I uh, got a request to take a look at Netflix. Um, I was going to talk about this in response also to uh, some other uh, some other stocks that had earnings today. Uh, you're just beating around this low. Um, other than you've got the uh, kind of a wintertime bias of people that uh, subscribe back, um, they've had a ton of failures. I'm wondering if anybody can. Uh, today. I'm wondering if anybody can name the number one show on Netflix for the last two weeks. We'll give you just a second to think about it. Yeah. Bueller. 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 Yep, someone got it right. It's Dahmer. Now, they've paid hundreds of millions for other shows. 
They paid almost nothing for this, and it's number one. And that is the, you know, for my time of being out there for 10, 12 years, um, if there's enough movie of money, then generally a, a good movie can come out of it. If there's too much money, then it's probably never going to be great. It's probably going to be McDonald's. It's going to be, yeah, you know what it is, but are you really going to think about it 30 minutes after you ate it? And I don't think there's anything in here that most people think about. The Midnight Club, Conversations with a Killer, John Wayne and Gacy. So it apparently uh, uh, pedophiles and uh, cannibals are high on the list of what people watch on Netflix right now. But the rest of the stuff, I don't think a lot of people would ever think of when they look at the top ten of what people are watching on it. What I will tell you is I think that you can almost bet that whatever the top uh, big thing that they're pushing now is for a series, it's probably all top ten of these uh, things that people are watching right now probably don't cost what one of the big things that someone else uh, produced. Uh, of course, uh, for Amazon, it's the billion dollars they threw down the uh, Lord of the Rings. For Paramount, it's the billions they've thrown into Star Wars, or excuse me, Star Trek, to destroy it. For Disney, it's Star, it's Star Wars, how they've been able to just uh, take billions and turn it into crap. So I'm not a big fan of these streamers. Uh, the standard uh, thing is you get a few big hits, you get way bigger than your britches, you start making bigger and bigger bets in Hollywood, and they all tend to come up snake eyes at the same time. Um, and for a place that's supposed to be known uh, for being creative, once one thing happens, everybody else wants to be in on it. There were four uh, volcano movies in one year. There were four asteroid movies in one year. Then no one does any of them because none of them did any good. Probably none of them were all that great. Everybody was rushing to get them out because of the other ones. And I don't see, you know, for a long time, uh, you had kind of the HBO model, which is hire really good people and leave them alone. And, you know, if you build it, they will come. But we're getting back into the same horrible Hollywood kind of thing that we had before streaming, which is everybody has their egos and they want to get involved on it. So I'm kind of thinking that the business isn't so flawed as the management. Uh, but uh, when you look up here, you got eh, okay volume. Um, am I predicting this is the end of the world? No, like I said, they'll probably be able to show that some of the people came back now that the weather's starting to move, uh, they always have kind of a bump, uh, almost all of them, uh, coming in September. About 80% of their profits come out of the United States. But uh, you know what? It's just one of those things where uh, it is a feast or famine business. They tend to have a real horrible idea of what creative uh, are, and uh, it just... Uh, it, it, it's the bean counters and the non-creative people tend to think that they're really the masters of the universe where they should just give the people that are creative money and go hide. But they've got to justify uh, their giant paychecks. And to do that, they get involved and screw it all up. So anyway, on the Disney, of course, they took one of the prized uh, uh, franchises of all time in Star Wars and continue to uh, uh, just denigrate it over and over and over. Um, if you look at Paramount, uh, their Star Trek series, just horrifically, horrifically bad. Um, even when uh, Star Trek Next Generation was on cable, one uh, episode back then in the 80s, or I mean in the 90s, had more viewers than the entire series do these days. So whether it's Picard or some other thing that's just horrifically bad, uh, these folks continue uh, over time over time to make horrifically bad stuff after a period of doing very well stuff. 
And it's almost always for that same reason. The executives get involved. They think they know what's going on. Uh, but uh, if you can watch uh, She-Hulk, uh, attorney at law, for more than five minutes without laughing and then turning it off, uh, you're a better man than I. But anyway, uh, the reason I also bring that up is uh, we talked about it about yesterday, and that was these game uh, manufacturers like Hasbro and Mattel don't really think, have anything to hang their hat on anymore. I remember, you know, there were Star Wars lunch boxes and pizzas, and there was a movie that was a ripoff of it. What was it, Spaceballs? There was a lot of stuff going on when these things were good and everybody loved them. Now they just kind of pick at the dead bones of all these things. And, of course, big money was in uh, came back in a lot of these movies in a form of uh, licensing to make the toys. Uh, we said yesterday the only thing that really ever sold in the last couple of years of any size whatsoever was the uh, uh, Baby Yoda doll. The rest of the stuff has been horrific. Now, maybe part of that was uh, the COVID shutdowns, but I don't think so. I think you could have ordered any of those toys you wanted from Amazon, and for the most part, they were available. But uh, Amazon, I mean, Hasbro down a little bit. Let's take a look at Mattel. Um, but I'm going to tell you that, you know, you, you get somebody that makes something like the Sopranos or something like that, and everybody watches it, is exceedingly rare. They generally come into it. And how many people knew any of the people that starred in um, Sopranos before it came out? Now we're back to the same kind of horrible crap that we had in the early 70s, which is we'll make a disaster movie. We'll put every star that we can find in it and throw them in the Poseidon Adventure, the Towering or Inferno or Earthquake or any other piece of crap that they can make. And they spend a lot of money. And, yeah, do they fill seats, but it never really makes that kind of money. And I don't know of anybody I've talked to that said, you know what? I haven't seen Earthquake in the last five years. I want to go watch it again. Very few. And, of course, how many people you know, uh, maybe they live in the basements, but they've watched Star Wars 100 times. Uh, that is the kind of difference. You want some kind of staying power. I don't see it in any of these big shows coming out uh, to any real extent. We'll be back in a minute. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. back had a little bit of a dip here on a sell program somebody brought it up in the den certainly looks when you come back now we haven't seen these for a very long time uh, I've seen them come back for a little while and if you're not really familiar with these um, it's just kind of the wholesale the market's doing okay let's we'll go ahead and sell as much as we can in the next 30 seconds or a minute or two minutes now, some of the times uh, are in the olden days before high frequency trading. Uh, there was a law that got changed in 2007, uh, but you, these would run a lot longer. Uh, but they tend to be uh, kind of uh, and kind of like pop up crowds. They just come out and uh, they've got a market that's uh, when they find out that there's a little depth to it, uh, they'll sell into it. And the problem is that so many of these bids anymore are phony so they really don't know how many are in there i'm wondering whether or not these aren't tests of the market to actually find out how many people are truly below that because as soon as it starts moving that way all those orders get pulled out uh, one of the reasons why uh, iex uh, as an exchange has been uh, talking about uh, being uh, uh, the new model where you at least have to wait half a second before you could put out, uh, put in or take out an order uh, into markets. But uh, you know what? If they're th if they're thin, you can do it. Uh, it does make me think a great deal. Oh, we have an uh, Apple cuts iPhone 14 production less than two weeks after its debut. Huh. Okay, there was some news out there. It looked to me like it was all over in a heartbeat, though. We shall see. Looks like maybe it was just a headline reader. Um, but it uh, does kind of uh, remind me a bit when these things happen of a story Jesse Livermore told in his book, Reminiscence of a Stock Operator, in which somebody comes in and says they have a great tip and this stock is going to the moon. And Jesse picks up the phone uh, to his uh, uh, his. Uh, broker dealers that are on the floor and this guy says uh i forget what it was something like weed or corn uh is going to the moon and uh, everybody knows it and he works for some guy who's got the inside skinny on it so he says uh okay let's sell those and of course the guy with the tip goes nuts because why are you selling it i told you uh that uh you know that it's going to the moon i know it for a fact everything's going on and he says, uh, just give me a minute. I've been in this business for a while. And then uh, he says, uh, I'll sell 10,000 more. And, then, of course, the guy, the tipster, keeps going uh, to bigger levels of insanity. He goes, if I would have known that all you were going to do is the opposite, I would have uh, uh, done something else. And uh, so he says, uh, just give me a minute. Of course, back then you didn't find out instantly what happened. He says, just give it a couple of minutes. And then he says, uh, I got my reports back. Uh, the market held up with uh, me selling 20,000 uh, bushels incredibly well. 
So there is a fairly good uh, downside uh, support in the market. He says, uh, so um, I'm going to put in this next order, and he buys 100,000 shares or 100,000 bushels. And, of course, uh, he says, uh, thanks for your tip. Um, I did exactly what uh, experience has told me, and that is to test the market to find out before I make a big operation. Uh, the test showed that, yes, there were a lot of buyers right below where we were at now that I could sell 10,000 shares, and it really didn't impact the market very much. But uh, that's it. Anyway, yeah, we're starting to see a little bit of action here uh, from Apple. We'll bring that back up in that. But, uh, you know, we can't uh, always sell 10,000 or 100,000 uh, bushels of wheat or that. But uh, you can really see how much support and resistance is. And it's a really teachable and learnable moment when we do see these come along. Uh, and you see the volume come in and see just how bad the market gets hit on those. Eh, we're still, eh, we got below uh, 3070 on the S&P. That's a pretty big number for me. Uh, as I said, I still suspect we're going to do better this week and probably 375 on the on the spies by Friday. But uh, we shall see. 877-927-66. Four A. Okay. And what else do we have? So Apple got a little bit of a reversal here. Let's take a quick look. Where's that at? Look. So what'd you lose? You lost uh, your to to to. 145.22, and you've gone down to 140.87. A little under that, yeah, about 140.87. Now we're starting to get a little bit of a bounce now over on probably the instant selling on it. I did. I was never really thinking that uh, uh, all those orders were probably going to be accepted as well as everybody thought they were but uh yeah, still in the range okay eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight uh as we said uh oh, we've got to take a look at tesla here that's l a and uh not a lot out here well, you basically have the same kind of volume at the lows you've bounced a couple of days and given uh, a lot of it back. Um, we'll find out. Again, Tesla uh, will probably be more of an issue tomorrow uh, on what they say about their business in China. And if they believe whether or not uh, China is going to be uh, more loose or still continue with the zero tolerance program on COVID, uh, which is pretty much killing their economy. But, uh, eh, what can you say? Um, I'm not one to try to bet, pre-bet this, uh, but uh, in the last few times that we've seen earnings from Tesla, it hasn't moved past the range where you'd actually need to make money uh, if you bought the options. Uh, then, about uh, six, maybe 12 hours later in trading, you start getting the real move. But generally, they're pretty good at throwing a lot of cold water on the movement right after the earnings, and then it starts moving later. Okay. Let's see what here. Okay. Uh, talked about TLT earlier. Let's take a look at the SMHs now that Apple has come. Of course, there's eight big public companies that supply Apple. So we'll see what we did here on the SMHs. Eh, kind of giving it back here a little bit. Um, on the TLT, I don't know. You broke the lows. And you really don't have any support any lower. So we'll see. Anyway, we'll be back in a minute. I'll go through some of these uh, in the SMHs.
Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. As we go here and I look at the charts and I look at options, uh, I didn't see much change out here. As we spoke earlier in the show, uh, 37, uh, 370 on the spies is kind of the low end of the range. Uh, 375 is kind of medium resistance. Uh, 380 on the spies is massive resistance. I don't think we actually go higher than that uh, this week into Friday, but it is options expiration. Um, I always wonder about these uh, quote, quote, stories that break uh, through the trading day and don't happen after. Uh, as uh, maybe uh, they're not as true as everybody thinks they are. Did look at the uh, companies that uh, supply Apple, and none of them really, I mean, 1%, 1.5%, a lot of them kind of move with it. But uh, I don't know. It smells a little fishy to me. Maybe they are cutting supply. But uh, when it happens like that uh, in the middle of the day, kind of out of the blue. I'm always, uh, eh, color me skeptical. So anyway, I had a question about the IWM I wanted to get to. The only thing is you're back up to the previous high. Last high, you had 37.5 million shares. That was the 176.17 high in the IWM. Today, you got into it with 22 million shares. You know, let's say you get into this with like 32 million shares by the end of the day or 30 million shares. 
It's going to be lighter. Uh, but I'm not going to be surprised to see that we do have a kind of just stumble up into the end of the year that maybe starts now. Uh, we've been waiting for what I thought would be that counter trend move and counter trend moves in a bear market can last a lot longer than you can remain solvent if you have to stay short. Now, maybe there's another good thing coming out here, but my guess is that we're going to probably just stumble up. It's not going to be huge, but the uh, continued movement or bias is going to be slight into the fall and into the Christmas. Uh, and then after that, real problems. So when you can, not when you have to, we'll see you here tomorrow. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible.